Tuesday, February 27th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. As you guys know, I start out with the stock market indexes, in this case, the E-mini March futures contract, and go into futures markets always. And I'm currently using NinjaTrader. Uh, sometimes I use TradeStation and show you the ER trading signals and some, you know, results. Now, let's start out with the March E-mini. We are not overbought, but very close in the last couple of days on this custom RSI at the bottom down here. So, it's no surprise it's starting to slip. But is this an important high the yesterday? I'm not so sure. I don't really have enough evidence or conviction to say that that's true. But I am looking for other reasons for a short-term downside minor technical correction at a minimum 49.47, but also possible, if not probable, to 48.40, we're down to 47.48 area. Now that would be where the market was going sideways December 20th through a little bit of January 20th, 19th. So for about a month. I uh, don't really expect it to be any significant amount lower than the bottom of the support area, but I do think there's a good chance it'll come back into that support area eh, two or three weeks from now and then continue on in the bull market. I see no reason to believe that this is the beginning of anything more than a short-term correction. Next chart. We just simply have the one uh, five-minute spider, uh, <coughs> eight-minute, E mini March futures contract on the screen at the moment. As you can see, we just recently made a minor new low for the day. And this five minute chart looks like it's about to make another set of new lows. So we're between, we're below yesterday's lows and the day before that. But the big day up was again on the 22nd. And the low the day before that is going to be very, very important 49.58. And I do think it's going to be challenged and broken relatively soon. Next chart, daily data spider. Uh, let me get current prices in view and pull it to the left a little bit. We're down a very modest 78 cents, nothing major. It's got a gap to close a little below the market. It's 497. That'll do the trick to close the gap. But there's no other reason to believe it's going to st stop there other than the gap is closed. In fact, I don't think it's going to stop there. And we're going to see if we can get to 490. And I think that's where it's going to go to. And there's no reason to believe it couldn't get down to 482. But the real support area starts at 477 on the SPY down to 465. That's where I think it's going to end up bottoming out a month or two from now, three at the most, and start to move up again. Again, this is not a big bear move. It is a modest, typical, short-term correction in a longer-term bull market. Something in the neighborhood of uh, maybe of February of 23, when it went down into middle of March. Um, maybe we're going to get something similar to that. It might even be as significant as the top we saw July 31st. So August, September, October, and into October, we saw a downside correction and then a huge move, move out of that. So something along those lines, next chart, spider, one minute, heading down fairly steadily uh, in the last two and a half days. Next chart, we have a sell signal that made a little bit of money in the QQQ if your stop was in the right spot. And they're not looking at the ER1 overnight, which was would have made some money. You're looking at the other strategy techniques, ER3, and it lost a slight bit, very slight, a couple of days ago. I'm not getting another signal yet. I'd love to see uh, in overbought conditions, another bearish engulfing, but I'm not getting it so far. But my expectations are extremely similar. I'm looking for a move down on the SPY or QQQ, sorry, to 413 to 395. Next chart, NASDAQ March futures contract. 
dribbling down a little bit lower today, 31 lower, not much lower at the moment. A sell signal about a week ago did make a little bit of money. Um, I think it's, like I said about the other indexes, trying to top out. I'm not getting blatantly obvious sell signals for what I look for. Uh, that one was, but it didn't develop into the highest high, which is what I like to find. Uh, this one was a pretty good one. It developed into a pretty decent break. Um, some of these other signals are not necessarily the highest high, and this is only going back uh, several months. You need to really see signals that occurred at other time frames and so on over time. This buy signal was a whopper January 6th of 23, the beginning of the year. And of course, October 13th of 22, the bottom of the bear market to the day and the beginning of the long-term bull market and it's still intact bull market. Next chart, NASDAQ. One minute, March futures spiked into new low ground for a couple of days, bouncing back a little bit at the moment. I think it's about to fail and make new lows very soon. Next chart, bonds. Now, although bonds have held in some support for a few days, they're having a little bit of trouble at some minor resistance. And I can't justify a, a major turn at this point. It would be nice. It didn't give me any warning, not oversold, only a support level. So frankly, I think it's going to drop off a little bit below support in the next week or two, or go sideways more. And eventually, a month, two months, three months, four months, at the very most, start heading north. A long-term bull market, I think, has started. And we did, in fact, have a bullish engulfing ER buy signal on October 23. Last fall, the bottom to the day of the bond market. Next chart, uh, notes, 10-year notes. Sideways for the moment. Again, very much commentary like bonds, maybe minor new lows for a little while. No, no crashing bear move, I hope. But I'm really waiting for a buy signal <coughs> to start to forecast like that one. The bottom of the note market to the day, October 23rd, and the beginning of this last big move up. And now we have a, a sizable correction, which I don't think is quite over yet, but not too much lower. The bigger picture is looking for a buy signal. Next, crude, only up uh, $1.13 momentarily, right back up to resistance. Perfect place for it to maybe stop again. But I'm not overbought, not even close. There's room for punching through the resistance level and still getting to the top of a, another resistance level that is the yellow zone, <laughs> where I think it runs a much better chance of topping out and getting back into overbought condition again. Natural gas. Uh, this is actually the NASDAQ. It's out of place. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> we got the top of the market in natural gas, heating oil, heating oil. And so far, I see no reason for it to um, not make lower lows again. We got down close to oversold, but not quite. This is a little bounce for a day or two. I don't trust it. I think it's going to turn back and make lower lows again very soon. <laughs> Now, gold, silver, platinum, gold, sell signal on top of the rally, on top of the rally, on the bottom of buy signal, on the bottom of buy signal. I have outlined some unbelievably great signals uh, that happened. Oops, I missed that. So that was a buy. That's right. That's unbelievably bad. Wrong. But we never get hurt that bad. We have a very tight stop to begin with. The endeavor of the ER signal strategy is to get in at a turning day for the beginning of a brand new move in the opposite direction to the exact day. And you can see it does it a lot. Gold, pick the bottom of that one, top of that one. So a lot of these that I've got circled are the best ones. I don't have one recently. I wished I did in support. That would have been a great combo. 
now we're not overbought or oversold anymore. I got to be fairly neutral. I'm looking for more sell signals, frankly, and we could have a little bit more of a rally. Silver is in support and it is not that close to oversold. So I'm not too sure about silver at the moment, except for being in support. I've got to see some strength here right now. It is just barely higher on the unchanged, basically. No comment, waiting for signal. My bias is neutral to a little bearish, even though we're in support because of the overall trend. And of course, I highlighted also in silver some of those fantastic signals that we have last year. They just had gold and silver whoppers, platinum. Nothing lately. Wished I would have got a signal on the top there. Didn't do it. I got buy signal on the bottom here. That was on the bottom there top there and when i mean the top and bottom i'm talking about the low day and the high day for a significant amount of time i think we're building a bottom here not a big one but a modest medium in support but i gotta see it start to turn up this is a doji an inside day it doesn't really mean too much so i'll pass on a comment high grade copper between a rock and a hard spot resistance up above has stopped all the rallies they lasted a week or two or three so far all the breaks on the downside have stopped in the support area so why not it could perpetuate that same bouncing back and forth for a little while longer next soybeans oversold downside major major long-term bearish breakout this soybean prices the last couple of days have made new lows for two years and stayed there in new low ground now they did get oversold a little turning yellow but that's is very classical very typical on major downside breakouts so there's nothing wrong with that yesterday it found a home for a minor low and already today it rallied back up to resistance which wasn't very far away to begin with stopped and turned back down again we are almost low and last and now down on the day for soybeans this looks like it could be getting more oversold in the next few days and making lower lows with another rally being expected back up to about 1160 in a week or two next chart meal soybean oil sorry in support and oversold bouncing a little today don't trust it very much. The trend is your friend. The trend is down. So rallies up to resistance levels are what you would normally expect. Up to trend lines you would normally expect. And I haven't drawn a trend line in here yet. But we're not super close to it at the moment. And uh, other reasons. I would like to see a very small rally eliminate some more of the oversold condition and then turn down again. So I'm neutral to bearish short-term intermediate and long-term meal same kind of comment but this is interesting today we have a engulfing it is a bearish engulfing but we're in a support area <clears throat> this condition sometimes ends up being a turning point back up again and it doesn't look like it at all oh, darn cough so i am looking for a move back up soon i'm waiting for a reversal i wouldn't go short here this is prime territory uh for a turn back up don't see it starting yet corn yesterday was the day we got a brand new er buy signal period today's the first day after the signal we are already in a profitable situation slightly not a lot our stop has come up dramatically already and obviously because of the signal i'm now bullish but it is a bear market and i don't see anything here that's going to cause me to be more than a rally in a bear market so i'm looking for at a minimum 450 and i also got to think 466 might stop the rally 
And I can't completely rule out something really all the way back up to this major resistance level, um, which I probably should drop the bottom of that a little bit lower. Whoops, double clicked in inadvertently. And do I want to bring this down to something like that? I do, I do. And let me go grab the, well, I'm going to do that later. So um, 500 is not out of the question. But yes, I am now turning bullish and I did get my signal and I'm happy about that. So far, so good. Let's see if it works very nicely. Next chart. Only a few days ago in wheat, we got a buy signal. Now this is different. Wheat has had a very big bear move since the beginning of the bear market when the war started two years ago. And we did get unbelievably enough a major bear sell signal smack dab on the exact high day, uh, which was, I believe my cursor is in the right spot, 3822, March 8th of 2022. Also another one on the other rally high, uh, which was uh, May 18th, April, May, sorry, May 18th, right, of 22. So the strategy picked the top and the second highest high for what ends up being a whopping huge long-term bear market. Now, we have the possibility of a double bottom. Uh, it is not a very big one. Late November to last week, a few months. Typical size for a, day, a double bottom formation, a couple, three, four, five months. That's not too big, too small. If I'm right about this, we will continue to rally up to and through this resistance area, getting above on a closing basis, the 645 approximate numbers, 650, let's call it, would cause me to say that we picked the second low on a double bottom. We now have an upside breakout and the upside objective, if this happens, and it's just starting, just starting maybe, a few days now, but if the double bottom persists, then the upside objective would probably be something in the neighborhood of 750, a very big move. Next chart, cattle. Resistance stopping the rally so far. It's flip-flopped to a little bit lower on the day at the moment. I'm looking for sell signals, not quite getting them yet. We do have some divergence. That's the high in the indicator, but that's the high in the price on the same day. Then the indicator did not make new highs when price did, and again and again. So this is a triple divergence, actually. Very rare. Not that it guarantees it's going to go down. It's just interesting that that has happened. And it is an indication that the odds are bending toward bearish. Let's see what happens. Hogs overbought, stopped dead a couple of days ago at the rally high at the resistance level. Perfect. Started to slip a little the next day, yesterday, and today, again, we're a little lower. So how low can she go? Probably 80. And I can't rule out all the way back down in a month or two, maybe 70, the low 70s. Next, OJ. Well, we got the rally high on October 31st, not knowing at the time it was a shoulder high. We got the top of the market, not knowing at the time that it was the head of a head and shoulder top. But you started hearing me talk about head and shoulder top formation probably on December 8th, and then talk about the exact price level and date that I thought it was going to occur on December 11th. And then I turned out to be one day too soon and a little bit too low in price for my objective on the rally, which was right around here. And it turns down, and that's the last shoulder, a little bit anemic, but a last shoulder high. Timing is price. Timing is very nice. Price is a little low, and down you go. Breakout, downside objective, almost perfectly fulfilled. And guess what? A buy signal involved in making the bottom. It's not the lowest low. It's close. And then... Oh my, we get another sell signal in the top of the market on the rally here, just February 8th. A few days, great short-term trade. Maybe if you want to, this is a long-term trade, new short. 
Uh, you're missing the boat by a little bit here, not too much, but I certainly can't rule it out. Looking for lower levels, looking for a market to come down to 342, break it, and next go down to this old downside objective at 285, 280, I think it was actually the objective around 283 or so, and maybe even break that. This high in orange juice is a classic longer term blow off top type of high. The implication is this is just the first major leg down. That was the leg number two, if you want to talk Elliott numbers. And number three is going to come down way down to something in the ballpark of 200, maybe even lower. Next chart, Coco. Unfortunately, our sell signal a couple days did not work. Got stopped out. But we are still overbought. I'm looking for another sell signal. Sometimes you'll see two or three. I don't remember even four, but two or three during the topping out process. And hopefully one of those three or two is the exact high day. We'll see what happens. I'm looking for sell signals. I'm trying to uh, maintain a bearish expectation. And that's uh, not very comfortable when the market's always making new highs, making it not look so good. Next chart, coffee. <clears throat> new lows for a while. Looking for lower levels. Don't have a lot to say about it. Neutral RSI. So I think it's going to work its way lower. Yeah, there might even be a small bounce first. But yeah, basically lower. And sugar. Same comment here. Longer term top built. Resistance basically stopped the rally. Didn't quite get to the resistance. Sell signal during the topping out process. Not the highest high, unfortunately. And... Just a new low only a couple of days ago. So I think it's going to make new lows very soon. Cotton. We had a sell signal. It worked for a day very nicely. Good profitable trade. But now today we have a higher high. But we're still overbought again. So it could very well be building a top formation. I think there's a darn good chance that that could be happening. I need more development in order to say more about that. I would not be going long. And for an intermediate to longer term trader, I, I'd be watching very closely to put on new intermediate to longer term short positions. E-mini again, near the low, not down too much, but you know what I'm thinking. You can reach me at info at ersignals.com. You have a great trading day. Talk to you later.